Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Zach here and it's Q&A on Sunday and we've got a whole slew of questions to get through so we're going to jump right into them. Uh, first of all, Rob from YouTube asks, uh, and actually all the questions were from YouTube, uh, so I'll just mention the usernames uh, to give them credit for asking the questions. And Rob asks um, about combining uh, fruit and smoothies that uh, also have nuts and seeds in them, fermentation issues, etc. And he also specifically talks about someone using fruits of the earth in a nut-based smoothie or in an almond milk or something like that. And it really depends on the... I'm not familiar with fruits of the earth specifically. If they've taken the sugar out of fruits of the earth, uh, then it's probably not going to take cause any fermentation issues. <clears throat> but if they've left, if it's just a dehydrated ground-up fruit powder, uh, then it will cause issues. It's just like uh, putting dried fruit in your smoothie. Um, dried fruit or whole fruit mixed with nuts and seeds is going to cause fermentation and the more sensitive you get or cleaner you get and the more balanced your diet is, the more sensitive you're going to be to it. So there's some people out there who can throw everything into one blender and zip it up and they don't have a problem but you, if you were to look at the, their health it's not necessarily going to be at the optimum level. Um, now I do have at times used like uh, the, it's like an extract fruit powder it's got the, some of the fiber, obviously the water and the sugar, fruit sugars taken out of it. And that can be added to um, a smoothie that was more nut based. Uh, so yeah, that's just one thing to keep in mind. You have to really go on your own feeling. If you're throwing a few shizandra berries, for example, in your smoothie, and like a teaspoon is the recommended amount per day, it's not enough, um, and it's actually a very low sugar fruit as well, but there's not enough... Uh, quick digesting factors in there that's going to affect the the slow fat digestion of the nuts and seeds. And he's also asked about uh, making a tea out of the goji berries and if you had that in your smoothie whether that would be causing issues. Now you're still going to get some of the sugars, the fructose and glucose in the tea from the berries and that's going to be in your smoothie. And that is actually okay because it's the whole fruit. For some reason when you have a whole fruit mixed with nuts and seeds it's going to cause fermentation something about the way the fruit digests, it speeds through quickly in, in combination with the sugars which feeds fermentation um, that seems to be the cause of problems but when you have a tea made out of goji berries or any of the other berries used in various herbal traditions from around the world um, it's a lot easier to take um, so that's another way you can get the properties of some of these um, berries if you want to mix them into your smoothies or elixirs if they're uh, more nut based or seed based uh, smoothies. He also asked whether I've been to the Tree of Life Institute, and no I haven't. It's another amazing looking healing center. I've been to the Hippocrates Health Institute. People are familiar with uh, my three week blog that I did while I was staying there. Um, but yeah, the Tree of Life looks amazing. It's a very similar uh, program in terms of the foods and what you experience. They've definitely got their differences as well. And yeah, another question he's asked is about my personal life, like what I'm looking to do as a professional. Well, this is actually what I'm looking to make a career out of, of course. And I have worked in the health industry uh, on a larger basis for a number of years now. I do con some contract work right now. Um, I've got my website as well. I write articles and there will be um, ways of me making money in the future that will come. Uh, for instance, I am going to be doing phone consultations soon. I'll have that set up on my website. I'm working on that right now. I'll have some products down the road as well. Um, and as for my age, I've actually had a number of people ask me this lately. It's kind of interesting. Um, I personally don't choose to divulge my age to people in general. Even we'll be out somewhere. Um, obviously, there are instances when you have to tell your age, whether you're like, traveling, you have your passport, or you have a driver's license, you need that for some reason. But other than that, I consciously try to forget my age, and I actually remember earlier this year, I did forget my age at one point, when there was something I had to remember it for. Um, because I've gone on this uh, sort of path of purposely trying to forget my age, like, just not even associating with that form of time, like, the way that we keep track of age is kind of an obsession with the thought that time is linear, and that with the passing of the earth around the sun equals our body as aging. And if anyone's familiar with some of the videos or articles I've written 
on the way our mental attitude can affect our physical health, you might understand why I'm personally choosing to do this. Some people might think this is weird because I appear, they want to know, they want to match up, match up my age to my appearance and they don't trust me if I don't say my age, but um, that's fine if they choose to do that, but my reasons for not divulging my age to anyone is uh, purely for the purpose that this could, I don't know for sure, this could be a potential way to be healthier and to live a longer life. It's just another one of those things that you can stack up on these multiple um, things that you can bring into your life to enhance longevity. It's just the icing on the cake. The cake could be the diet, exercise, uh, family, and sleep. And then the, the icing is just all the little things you can do on top of it all that might just give you that extra little boost. So the next question is from Chargeit24 and they're asking what sort of uh, superfoods can be done on a low glycemic raw food cleanse and they're also interested on getting enough calories while doing a uh, sort of candida type cleanse or a low glycemic or no sugar diet and I would say look at my past videos I just did a series on how to eat a low glycemic diet or no glycemic diet while still staying raw. It's a four part series, you can just scan back through past videos and you'll have all the information there. Um, basically you're going to have to eat slightly higher fat if you're wanting to stay mostly raw. Um, if you're not wanting to do as many of the sprouted beans and legumes and grains, um, you're going to have to eat a lot of fat or you have to start cooking some grains. Also really loading up on high quality plant based proteins like the algae. That's a really great way to stabilize blood sugar. Um, chlorella is a great way to do that. You can get the chlorella tabs from Ultimate Superfoods. You take a bit, few of those between meals just to keep that blood sugar stable as your body's readjusting to the no simple sugars in the diet. And as for superfoods, um, basically all the superfoods are okay. I'll just name some of the ones that you don't want to be taking. It's any of the f dried fruit powders basically. Um, so goji berries, that you shouldn't take that if you're doing no glycemic. If you're doing low glycemic, that's probably one of the good berries you can add in. And, and that way you'd be doing not doing uh, things like mangoes and all these other high glycemic fruits. But goji berries are very low glycemic fruit. Um, and then of course there's the golden berries. If you're on no glycemic, you don't want to be doing those. Um, you don't want to be doing the agave. It's not really a superfood anyways. You don't want to be doing the honey. Uh, bee pollen's okay. Although, technically, it has a little bit of honey in there. It's so powerful in terms of its protein content, it's very stabilizing to the blood sugar. Um, I would say mesquite is okay. It's a low glycemic food, much in the same way that a whole grain would be a low glycemic food. Um, but you wouldn't want to take something like carob, which is actually a little higher glycemic, and you can tell the sweetness of carob is a little more than mesquite. So when something's really sweet, and people are telling you it's low glycemic, it's probably not, unless it's uh, got something in it that doesn't actually even get uh, absorbed as sugar, such as uh, your cone root syrup. It's a very low glycemic sweetener, but it still has fructose in it, so we don't want to take that if we're doing no glycemic um, diet. But xylitol and stevia, although they taste very sweet, they don't get processed as sugar. Another thing you can do if you're trying to, if you're doing a lot of working out, you're looking to get enough calories, is to take uh, digestive enzymes or systemic enzymes or a combination of them. You can take them with or away from meals. If you're doing them with the meals, that's when you're going to get the most, uh, that's how you're going to be able to eat less calories and get more out of it. There's a bodybuilder named Wade McNutt out of Vancouver, BC, or BC at least, I'm not sure if he's in Vancouver, but he um, is one of the spokespersons for Sun Warrior Protein. And if you look at this guy's diet plan, he's over 200 pound bodybuilder. He's a short guy, he's like 5'8 or 5'10 maybe. And he's competed in Mr. Universe competitions. That's the biggest bodybuilding competition there is. He didn't win because there's guys who are 280 pounds in that. But he's over 200 pounds and he's really ripped. But he eats about 1800 calories a day. This is less than most people are eating who look skinny. That's less than I eat. Um, but then he's also got one day a week where he eats 2500 calories a day. So overall it's about 2000 calories a day over the course of a week. And uh, he's able to do that because he uses uh, certain digestive enzymes that really maximize what he's putting into his body. He gets more out of it.
I'll see you next week, and remember, you can always ask questions, and I'll build them up through the weekend, and I'll answer them in the next week's video.